This is the new 16 inch Micro Pro base model with the M4 Max chip in space black. Combining it with the new Apple intelligence features, I would call this an intelligent portable piece. Let's dive into the best features and see who should consider upgrading. Starting with the best Apple intelligence features that actually make a difference in your workflow. Siri and ChatGPT integration is super useful. If you go to Apple intelligence and Siri and turn on ChatGPT, whenever you press command twice and ask Siri a complex question, it'll integrate with ChatGPT to give you the best answer. I would also suggest turning off the ChatGPT confirmation in settings. What's even cooler is that ChatGPT can actually take a screenshot of whatever is open on your screen and answer your questions about it, which is pretty smart, right? Now let's see what ChatGPT can do with writing tools. So if you select some text, right click and choose writing tools or click the intelligent icon here, you'll get a bunch of cool options. You can tweak the tone to make it more friendly or professional, which is great for emails. You can summarize long notes or articles, organize text into key points or even tables, and also fix grammar or spelling mistakes. There is also this describe your change option here, which gives you full control to adjust the tone of the text and make it sound just the way you want. But here is a pro tip. The Compose option in Writing Tools lets you use ChatGPT to type in any app, website, or note. You can describe exactly what you want to create or change text. You just need to type a prompt and it's ready to help. And here's the best part. You can attach files like a document or photo and ChatGPT will give you insights based on your content. There's a cool new app on your MacBook called Image Playground for making animated images. Just to scrub what you want here or drag and drop a photo or even import one from your photos app and then add themes, places or accessories and your Mac creates images in animation or illustration style. What's really cool here is that you can pick a person and add objects or places or give them accessories to create unique images. It's kind of fun for sending in messages. Photo cleanup is one of my favorite features. Just tap edit on a photo in your MacBook, circle or tap what you want to remove, and it quickly removes it without needing any other extra app. With the new macOS update, you can mirror your iPhone screen on your MacBook. One of my favorite features is being able to drag and drop files between my MacBook and iPhone. It's faster and easier than AirDrop, and it helps declutter my iPhone. Another useful feature is notes transcription, which is great for students and professionals. You can record a lecture or meeting and it will turn it into a transcript in notes, which helps you not miss any important points. I like these AI features and I can still have them on my 14 inch MacBook Pro M1 here. So if you have an M1 or newer model, you don't need to upgrade just because of AI because you already have them. But if you're still using an Intel Mac, it might be worth upgrading. All right, here I've got the 16 inch M4 Max chip base model in space black and standard display. Just so you know, the price for this base model here is 3499 USD before tax. Inside the box, you get a black MagSafe cable to match the space black color and a minimal white charging brick that supports fast charging up to 140 watt. The new MacBook Pro looks pretty much like the last year's model. You have the choice between a 14 inch and a 16 inch in silver or space black. Space black looks great but shows fingerprints, so I usually go with silver like my M1 Pro. If you're thinking about 14 inch, it's perfect for portability. But if you need more screen space for working comfortably on the go without an external monitor, or if you want a bigger trackpad for extra comfort, the 16 inch is the way to go. The 16 inch weighs 4.7 pounds and the 14 inch is around 3.6 pounds. Both are easy to carry, but the 14 inch is definitely easier to carry around. So if you want a bigger display, expect it to be a bit heavier. The keyboard and trackpad are excellent as always. Typing feels great and the large trackpad is super responsive. I use the trackpad for most tasks, but for more precise control, I grab a mouse. On the left, 
you get a MagSafe 3 charging port, two Thunderbolt 5 ports, and the headphone jack. On the right, there is an SDXC card reader and another Thunderbolt 5 port and an HDMI port. Thunderbolt 5 more than doubles transfer speeds, delivering up to 120 gigabytes per second, which makes it perfect for transferring large photo and video files. With the M4 and M4 Pro, you can connect up to two high resolution displays, but with the M4 Max, you can connect up to four external displays, which is actually great for multitasking, professional editing, and working with things like 8K videos or complex 3D content. It's just perfect if you need lots of screen space. The display is bright and clear with 1000 nits of brightness, which is like 400 nits more than the last model, making it easier to see in bright places. A big update is the new nano texture display. I checked it out next to the standard display in the store, and for an extra $150, it's worth it, since it cuts down on glare and reflections. But I wouldn't recommend it for professional photography or video editing with color grading stuff because it can reduce color contrast. The standard display has better contrast and since I use it indoors most of the time, glare isn't a problem for me. If you're often outside or you don't like reflections, the nano texture is a great option. Another cool upgrade is the 12 megapixel camera, which offers a bit sharper quality and better contrast, and I think the quality is perfect for video calls and meetings. It also includes center stage and desk view. Center stage keeps you centered in the frame even if you move, which is great for meetings and presentations. Desk view shows a top-down view of your desk, making it easy to share ideas, but the video can sometimes look low resolution or a bit distorted. Overall, this MacBook Pro is an excellent choice for remote work and creative projects. So this MacBook Pro with the M4 Max chip is so fast and Apple says that it's 20% faster than last year's M3 Max and it's over three times faster than M1 Max. The M4 Max is designed for demanding tasks like AI models and visual effects whether you are coding, editing large photos and videos, or working on 3D projects, this chip makes everything faster and smoother. And coming from an M1 Pro, my workflow now is smoother and lag-free. Also, if you go into battery settings here and switch from the default automatic mode to high power, it maximizes performance for heavy graphics work. This is perfect for pushing the M4 Pro Max to its limits when you need that extra power. But of course, it drains the battery faster. I've been using a 14-inch MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro chip and 16GB of memory. It is still handling video editing and multitasking like spreadsheets, website browsing and Notion projects smoothly. But when I use Final Cut Pro and Photoshop at the same time, like when editing videos and designing thumbnails, it can slow down or even crash sometimes. But overall, it's been reliable. And honestly, if I didn't have this channel to make review videos, I wouldn't feel the need to upgrade for my workflow, especially since the M1 also supports Apple intelligence features. So if you're looking for desktop level power for your heavy projects in a laptop that actually you can take it with you anywhere, the M4 Pro or M4 Pro Max is an excellent choice. Apple says the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro or M4 Max can last up to 24 hours for video streaming and 17 hours of web browsing. That's a big jump from last year's M3 models and it gives you up to 6 more hours. Over the past two weeks, I've edited videos, managed projects in Notion, browsed the web, transferred big files, used an external monitor, and watched movies without worrying about charging, even when I forgot my charger. But when I'm doing heavier tasks like video editing in Final Cut Pro, for instance, the battery does drain faster. For example, after about 5 hours of editing, my battery went from 70% to 15%. One nice feature is fast charging. If you're on the go, you can charge this MacBook up to 50% in just 30 minutes, which is a lifesaver for intense tasks. The M4, M4 Pro, and M4 Pro Max are fast, powerful, and portable, 
Battery life is excellent and they perform just as well unplugged. I say the 16 inch model is easy to carry, which makes it a great option for power users on the go. It really depends on your needs. Between M4 Pro and M4 Pro Max, I'd say M4 Pro is best for most users. It's perfect for tasks like coding, video editing, graphic design, and 3D animations. It's reliable and long-lasting. And M4 Pro Max is best for professionals with heavy workflows like 8K video editing, complex 3D projects, or setups with up to four external displays. It actually might be overkill for most people, but if you think you need that extreme performance and you can afford it, it's totally worth it. And I'd say for my workflow, the M4 Pro would be more than enough. If you're using an Intel MacBook, upgrading to the M4 Pro or M4 Pro Max will be a significant step up. If you are on an M1, the M4 series offers a nice performance boost, but you could stick with your current model and wait for another year. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more helpful tech reviews. See you soon.